Hello and welcome to another episode of Dream Home Cooking. Today is a delicious menu. It's butternut squash soup, my homemade soup I want to share with y'all. Also, a marinated carrot dish, or some of you might know it as copper pennies. And then I'm going to make a chicken, spinach, and smoked Gouda cheese quiche that is out of this world. And then I'm going to make a little pineapple freeze for just a little sweet at the end for just a little dessert. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with the carrots because... Um, I've got to let this sauce simmer for a little bit. So this is an interesting dish. Um, it's an old, old Southern dish. And some of you might know it as copper penny. Some call it marinated carrots. But what you want to do is start with two pounds or two 15 ounce bags of frozen carrots. You cook them, just boil them for about seven, eight minutes, just until they're warm through and still have a little crunch. Um, then to that, I'm going to add, this is a small bell pepper and a small onion. It's about a cup each, but you can eyeball it. If it's a little over or a little under, that is fine. And we're just already, of course, boiled and drained the carrots real well, just until they were, you know, cooked through and crunchy, still a little crunchy. And then I'm going to put those, put that onion and pepper in there. I'm just stirring that in there. And then the next step is to make the sauce. And this is very interesting and it is also delicious. So what you wanna do is start with a can of tomato soup. All right, and I'm slinging that everywhere. So you wanna use a knife or a spoon to get all that out of there. Okay, so we've got that. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit the put the heat on, probably about medium, because you don't want, or medium low to start, because you don't want that sauce to start boiling over on you. Okay, and then next is a teaspoon of Worcestershire. I've got a teaspoon of yellow mustard, and then uh, about a half teaspoon of salt. Then I have three quarters cup of vinegar, just regular white distilled vinegar. And then I have a half a cup of vegetable oil. This is quite interesting, I know, if you've never made this or had this, but this sauce is tangy and sweet all at the same time. And when you pour it over those crunchy carrots and onion and pepper, it is wonderful. Okay, so that was a cup of white sugar. So now I'm gonna bring the heat to about medium and I'm just gonna stir it until it all starts to melt together. This was on the menu. A lot of you probably remember Victoria's restaurant that was here in Huntsville. And I miss that place, but this was on their menu and I would always get it with their poulet and it's delicious. I made it at the lake back in the in the summer. We had about 20 people over for dinner and all but two people loved them. And the two people that didn't like them were my children. <laughs> they said, it's just kind of weird. But everybody else said, what in the world is in this? I gotta have the recipe. So anyway, these are the uh, marinated carrots. So now I'm gonna let this sauce, I'm gonna actually move it back here. And I'm just gonna simmer that on a medium low heat, just until it's warmed through and everything is incorporated in there. So about eight to 10 minutes. So we'll just let that hang out here. And then I'm gonna pop this over here. This will be the start of the quiche. So I have one teaspoon of butter, one teaspoon of olive oil. I'm gonna heat that. And then I'm going to um, throw some shallots in there. And shallots are the little, they're, they're not the purple onion, but they do have, they're kind of light and purple around their skin and they're little and they usually come in a bag. They're in, always in the produce section. But if you can't find the shallots, a normal regular white onion is fine. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there. But that is just one shallot and it equates to about a quarter cup of chopped onion or shallot. So I'm gonna brown these for about six to eight minutes. And then when we come back, I'm gonna show you guys how I finish up the carrot dish as well as this delicious quiche. Since 1983, individuals and businesses in Alabama have relied on Wolf, Jones, Wolf, Hancock, Daniel, and South for their legal representation. Our experienced attorneys offer high quality legal counsel in commercial law, real estate, and personal injury litigation. So if you need an attorney, hire the best attorney you can. Call the experienced North Alabama attorneys at Wolf, Jones, Wolf, Hancock, Daniel, and South to arrange your initial consultation because we're dedicated to setting the standard for legal services. Choosing an appliance can be complicated these days. That's why at Bob Wallace Appliance, we start by asking questions like an occasional cook or a serious chef. 
something just for you or an army once a week or once a day. You see, it's not just what we know about appliances, it's what we know about you. Bob Wallace Appliance, locally owned and operated for more than 35 years. Online at BobWallaceAppliance.com. When you select Waldy Flooring's hardwood, you don't just enhance your home, you transform it. With hundreds of beautiful, durable, hand-selected varieties that come with up to a 50-year warranty, you can count on unsurpassed beauty and proven durability that's guaranteed to stand the test of time. When you want the best flooring for your home, come to Woldy Flooring in Madison. WoldyFlooring.com, 256-325-8453. Okay, we're back, and now I've kind of shifted things, and I've got the rest of the ingredients out for the quiche. I want to show y'all how I finish these copper pennies or marinated carrots. So I made the sauce, and it simmered for about seven or eight minutes. Then I just turned off the heat, and I'm going to carefully just pour it over these carrots and onions and peppers. The thing I love about this is it will last up to two weeks in the fridge because the vinegar sort of preserves it. So... Um, just know that and know also it's best the next day because once all this goodness marinates together for 24 hours in the fridge, that's definitely where you keep it, um, it is absolutely delicious. It's great with picnics. It's great with grilled chicken. It's just a great side dish. Um, and especially in the warmer months because it's just a nice, cold, tangy, and sweet side dish. So just give it a good stir. And of course, before you serve it, you wanna stir it real well, real well also. Okay, I'm going to move it over here. And then one other thing, please don't use canned carrots for that recipe. It will be awful and they will be mushy. You need frozen or, um, of course, you can use fresh. But to me, that's a lot of work to peel them and slice them. So I try to take shortcuts when I can. Okay, so now we're back to the quiche. So this little shallot and onion and butter sauteed for about eight minutes. Now I'm gonna add spinach. So this is, this was um, a six ounce bag of fresh sp spinach, that's hard to say. And so I use half the bag, so about three ounces of spinach. And I am kind of funny about my spinach. I like to lay it all out on a big um, piece of parchment paper or a cutting board. And I try to get as many of the long stems off as I can. You don't have to, but I just don't, don't like that in the quiche. So you take the three ounces and just rough chop it. And then I'm just throwing it in here and it's not gonna take long at all to start wilting. You end up with about half of what you started with because it just cooks down so much. So this is a quiche that I just recently started making and I never even knew that I really liked smoked Gouda until I made this. And so this is eight ounces of smoked Gouda and you can get it in uh, the deli section of the grocery store. And this one came, it's like a little wheel and it's eight ounces. And then you cut the rind around off of it and then I just shredded it. I have yet to find shredded Gouda cheese in the bag, but I prefer to shred it myself. I think the consistency is different from that bag cheese. I just think it's better. And this quiche is a very um, savory, custardy, just deliciousness in this pie shell. Okay, now here I have a cup and a half, a cup to a cup and a half of cooked chicken breast. And for this, you can also get a rotisserie chicken at the deli and just shred it yourself. Um, and include the dark meat in there. You just need a cup to a cup and a half of chicken. Okay, and then I'm just kinda stirring that chicken around just to heat it up a little bit. And then that's it. So I'm gonna turn this off and I'm just gonna let this sit here a minute and cool down a little bit before I put it into the pie shell. This is a frozen uh, pie shell straight from the freezer. Put it onto, definitely put it onto a cooking sheet because you may have spill over and you don't want to have to clean that out of your oven. All right, so for the filling, I have, I'm gonna go ahead and do the eggs first. Three eggs, and then I'm just gonna whisk these. I've got three eggs, and then I have a teaspoon each of salt and pepper. This is a very, very simple quiche recipe, but it is out of this world. 
This is great for brunch or lunch or straight up eight o'clock in the morning for me. <laughs> I'll eat chicken in the morning. Okay, so I got those eggs beaten. Now I'm gonna add one and a quarter cup of half and half. And yes, you need half and half for the quiche because you need that rich goodness. I would never do skim milk or 2% milk even. I don't even think whole milk. Uh, maybe you can, I've never never tried it. Okay, so you wanna make sure you get those eggs. You don't wanna over mix it, but you wanna make sure that the eggs are nice and whisked and incorporated in that half and half. Okay, so there is that part. So I like to put just about three tablespoons or four tablespoons of cheese on the bottom. This is a little hint or a tip, you know, it keeps that crust from getting soggy. So now I'm gonna add this to, on top of the cheese. Okay, so make sure I get all that out of the pan. Then I wanna just give it a little spread, spread all that chicken and spinach and onion mixture or shallot mixture evenly to the edges. Then I'm gonna take the rest of the smoked Gouda and I'm just gonna sprinkle it evenly over the top of the chicken and spinach mixture. And you do want to try to be careful when you're pouring this mixture into the pie crust because if you spill any on the pan, you wanna wipe it off because it'll make your oven smoke. I made this for dinner one night last week and Mike loved it. And so it's, it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Take your pick, whichever you want. Okay, and I've got a few little stray pieces of cheese. I'm gonna put those back in there. I'm gonna give this one more little whisk and then in goes egg and half and half mixture. And you wanna very carefully just pour it like that until it fills all the way up. There's a, a fine line where just a little too much, it starts to run out the side. You don't want that. That's why I use three eggs instead of four. You'll find that most quiches use four eggs, but this one is three. Okay, so I may sprinkle a little fresh uh, cracked pepper on that, but this goes into a 350 oven for 40 to 50 minutes. You wanna watch it because everybody's oven is different. Then it needs to rest about 20 to 30 minutes because that quiche just really needs to set up. So that's the quiche and the copper pennies. So I'm gonna get this in the oven and get everything cleaned up. When we come back, I'm gonna show y'all how I make this delicious butternut squash soup. You know, years ago, we researched different cabinet companies. Wellborn was the cabinet company that we decided to go with. Now, Wellborn has a lot of your custom style building like we did in the local cabinet shops years ago. You just can't go wrong with a product like that with Wellborn. On top of that, Wellborn has researchers that are out in the market every day. Their job is to see what's current in the market, what's selling, and what their dealers need to be showing in their showroom. So come out, let me help you design your kitchen with Wellborn products. Hey guys, come on in. Hey Troy. Yeah, let me show you around. Wow. You know, as the Acme Brick spokesperson, I get paid in brick. All the brick I want. Solid. What? Too much? To get Acme Brick quality, look for the Acme name. And here's the guest room. Hope you like a firm mattress. My father started this business in 1977. The people that work for us is part of what sets us apart. All of our employees have experience. All of our plumbers have been with us for 10 years or greater. Our motto at Dean and Son is quality and service. We're gonna do quality work. We don't leave people hanging. We're there when we're supposed to be. We're done when we're supposed to be. Living up to what you sell and service them after they pay you, that's where your integrity in the plumbing business comes. Dean and Son Plumbing Company. Call today at 518-9780. Okay, we're back and I've got everything cleaned up. The carrots are in the fridge, the quiche is in the oven and it's smelling delicious. So now I am super excited to share this recipe with y'all. This is my butternut squash soup recipe. And there are a lot of root vegetables in this. So you want to start with two tablespoons of olive oil. To that, I'm gonna add one onion, that's all in this bowl, two stalks of celery, two carrots, 
and two parsnips. And of course, you peel the carrots and the parsnips and just rough chop them. And y'all, if you don't know what a parsnip is, it looks just like a white carrot. And it's always over by the carrots in a bag, just like carrots. So we're gonna start the soup with this as a base, just to get some nice, great flavors. And I'm gonna saute these veggies until they're nice and soft. But in the end game, I'm pouring all of this into a blender and then I puree it. So then it's just a nice smooth soup. We went out to Colorado last Christmas and we had some amazing food. And this is one of the things we had. And I told Mike, I said, you know, I've always ordered butternut squash soup in restaurants, but I've never made it. And so I went on a quest when we got back and tested a bunch of different recipes and I came up with this and I'm telling y'all it is so good and comforting and I think it's pretty good for you because there's a lot of veggies in it. And I've got some fun toppings too that you can put on this that are always delicious. So I'm just going to let this keep simmering for about another six minutes until these veggies soften up. All right, so this has been cooking for about eight minutes. So the veggies are nice and tender. They smell wonderful. Now I'm going to add three to four fresh cloves of garlic and they just need to be peeled so you don't have to cut them, chop them, anything because remember we're going to put all this in a blender. All right and then this is four to five cups of fresh butternut squash and the reason I pay extra and buy it like this is because I have almost sliced my hand off more than several times trying to cut those big root vegetables like spaghetti squash and butternut squash but what you want to do is just give it a stir and then I'm going to add a teaspoon of salt and pepper. This is one of the few recipes that that's all I put, salt and pepper, nothing else. Okay, and then I am going to add four cups of chicken broth. You can also um, just buy this. This is 32 ounces, which equates to four cups. And I'm going to bring this up to high. I want to bring this to a boil. And then once it comes to a boil, I'm going to just turn it on medium heat and cook it about 20 minutes or until the squash are very tender. All right, so I'm just gonna let this come to a boil. I'm gonna clean this up and then I wanna show y'all how I make my pineapple freeze. Okay, so that uh, squash is continuing to boil, so it's gotta get tender before I put all that in the blender. So in the meantime, I wanna show y'all how I make this pineapple freeze. This is so easy. And if you ever have taken a child to Disney World, grandchild, anybody, and you hear Dole Whip, you, most of your kids probably loved it and it's about $12 for a cup of it and you can make it at home for so much less and it is so good. So you want to start with a pound of frozen pineapple. You can get it at the grocery store in the freezer section where all the fruit is. Then I have these little small bluebell ice cream cups. It's equivalent to about three quarters cup of ice cream and you can put a little more if you want but this just kind of gives it a nice little sweetness and and creaminess this is so stinking simple and it's so good all right and then i've got two tablespoons of sugar i'm going to add in there and there was a quarter teaspoon of salt as well and then i have just a little smidge about a teaspoon of fresh lemon juice that i squeezed into that little cup and then four ounces of pineapple juice and then I'm going to blend it and show y'all what happens. Okay, so um, as you're doing this, you'll want to have your spoon handy because I had to take it a couple different times and just sort of push it down, but it smells so good. Wow. And I'll tell y'all a secret. In the summertime, sometimes I put that in a mug and put a little Malibu rum on top with a spoon. It is so delicious. So for now, I'm just gonna scoot this over for a minute. This is almost ready. The squash is almost tender enough. Once it gets to that point, I'm gonna, of course, rinse that out and I'm gonna put all this in the blender and then put it back in the pot, put a can of unsweetened coconut milk in it and it's gonna be delicious. So by the magic of TV, well, I got the Dole Whip cleaned out of here and now I'm put, I ladled very carefully all the vegetables that were in this pot into this blender and now I'm just gonna blend it on medium until it's all blended. Okay, 
and then that's all you need. And if there's a few little stray pieces that are a little bigger, it's okay. But for the most part, it all got blended up. Okay, so now I'm gonna carefully pour this hot mixture. Hopefully it will not splatter back on me. <laughs> Put that in the pot. The only thing about these blenders, you have to be so careful because these blades are so sharp. So I don't wanna miss anything, so I'm gonna get a spoon and dig as much of that out as I can. Okay, and then the last grand finale for this soup, the best part is a can of unsweetened coconut milk. And you just gently pour it in there, and then it just needs to simmer. And you can see some of that coconut milk solidify, it gets solidified. So I like to open it, stir, take a butter knife and just gently stir it and try to break it up for the most part. Okay, so this is done other than just simmering for about another five or 10 minutes on low. And when we come back, Mike will be here to taste all of the creations I made. Carrier asks, what does comfort mean to you? Is it a cool breeze on a scorching day? Or a cozy corner on a cold night? <laughs> that every room of the house is as inviting as the next. And the air is fresh and clean for everyone. That humidity is where it belongs. At Carrier, comfort means more than just the temperature. Hello, I'm Annette Hale of Annette Hale's Indoor Comfort Systems, the lady with the team you can trust. Visit us online at IndoorComfortHSV.com. Hey guys, I wanted to let y'all know, about a year ago, me and Bruce Stone started a new company called Stonewood Homes. And Stonewood is a little different business plan than Woodland Homes because Stonewood is a scattered lot home builder, which means if you have a lot and you're looking for a builder, Stonewood is the answer. So if you own a home site or you're looking at building a custom home, give us a call at 830-9000 and let's start building. If you're looking to remodel or build your dream home, it all starts at the Dream Studio by Woodland Homes. At Woodland Homes Dream Studio, you'll work with seasoned professionals dedicated to providing you with the very best. Whether you're starting from scratch or remodeling, and with thousands of selections to choose from, the Dream Studio offers everything you need at the absolute highest quality, all under one roof. The Dream Studio by Woodland Homes. Live your dream. Call 830-9000 today. Okay, we're back, and I got Mike in the kitchen. And I, I'm hungry. <laughs> I am, too. You were a little bit late today. I, I know. It's <laughs> just okay. a lot going on. I know. There's a lot going on. <laughs> so I made butternut, the homemade butternut squash soup. I told the story about in Colorado. How oh, it eat. was so good. Oh, it was so yes, good. Yes, yes. But so what I wanted to show the viewers, um, when, oh. when I make it, I like to put some fun little toppers on it. And today I just have pepitos, which is basically just um, toasted pumpkin seeds. So you put those and it's so good with that little crunch. You can get these. I know Publix has them over in, by the produce. It's just called pepitos and they're great. And then maybe a little parsley. You could also put cooked crumbled bacon, maybe some chopped apples. It's just yeah. a nice fall. Yeah, you always got to you always, that, always got to put the green stuff to make it pretty. Yes, of course. And then <laughs> the presentation. I use the same dishes. My, <clears throat> you know, the pineapple <clears throat> freeze, a.k.a. Mm -hmm. Dole Whip, the... Um, Smoked key. Gouda chicken spinach yep. quiche yep. and good. copper pennies. And so. Yeah, and all it. looks good. Thank you. All right, well, let's eat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> first, first, it's, I guess, communities, yes. right? Yes. Well, Wynwood is the community yeah. of the week. And yeah. it's been a minute since I've been out there. We're getting ready to do our bus tour again with everybody in the company where yeah. we go and tour. Uh, there'll be that. people that'll be amazed. Oh, I know. I yeah. can't wait. So that's always so. a lot of fun. But yeah, yeah. Wynwood, actually, we just got through with the development meeting and we spent three hours talking about uh, Wynwood and phase two and should break ground on phase two here real soon. Wow. And if you go out there, uh, it's so busy. We've got actually two builders building in there full time. I mean, we yeah. probably got 30, 35 homes under construction. So Ooh, somebody wow. looking to kind of get out on a weekend mm -hmm. and go out and look at, you know, different floor plans. 
Wynwood would be a great community because there's a lot of houses yeah. under construction, a lot of houses getting close to being finished up. So you really kind of get some really good decorating ideas and kind of yeah. an idea about all of our different floor plans that uh, that we've got to offer. And, uh, you know, I think one thing that also is, is kind of good about Wynwood is that uh, we pushed the residential part back off Winchester Road. Yeah. Uh, and Winchester Road is getting ready to be five lane, so it'd be a lot better since there are five lane in it. But we've got seven acres of commercial. Yeah. So literally, you know, I say this all the time, but my dad just emphasized it so much. Location is the key. Mm -hmm. And so you'd be able to live in Wynwood. I can't guarantee you what's going to be built on the commercial, but I don't want any car washes or storage buildings or anything like that but like starbucks yeah. a restaurant yep. uh, love to build a hickory store barbecue restaurant yes, out there that would be good too. Uh, but it's going to be neat because they're it's going to end up being kind of a community that you can live in but also mm -hmm. a community to where you can walk to you know a restaurant and get something to eat and right. things like that so but uh, yeah we're excited about winwood and you know the market still seems to be you know mm -hmm. clicking right along uh you know even though that the rates have gone up we feel like it's temporary uh, we do feel like that it's still a very very good time uh, to invest mm -hmm. and when you really kind of look at what rental rates are versus what oh, you what insane. the mortgage interest rates are I mean literally when you look at the cost per square foot to rent and what mm -hmm. you're paying I'm looking at it and I'm like Landlords essentially are charging a 12 to 13 percent interest rate on their apartments to yeah. where you can still own for less than half of that. But anyway, still a great time to buy. We're fortunate to be in, in Huntsville with yes. all the jobs moving in and all the growth. So you're going to continue to mm -hmm. see, you're not going to see as much appreciation as you've had in the past couple of years, but you're still going to see good, strong appreciation. Yeah, I call it the sweet Huntsville bubble. Oh, yeah, <laughs> we're just sort of yeah I'm glad. I'm glad we're here. I feel good about <laughs> I it. You glad know, we are too. So, Great um, city. but anyway, uh, for anybody interested in a new home, website's the best way to get started. But we have models open seven days a week, beautifully furnished model with the latest and greatest as far as the decorating goes. And we just encourage you to shop online, or even better yet, uh, visit one of our communities. And our featured community this week is Winwood. So, brand new model out there. So definitely make sure to go out yes, and see it absolutely and as always a huge shout out and thank you to our wonderful sponsors you can find them on our website as well absolutely and for my recipes you can find them on woodlandhomes.com and the dream home cooking facebook page absolutely so you're interested in a new home y'all come out and see us all right let's eat let's do it